welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator in probably one of the most graphically intensive areas you can find in this sim, particularly in VR. Oh my goodness me. We're inside the Quest 2 and I'm going to go through some of my updated settings. And this again is, a, is thanks to Ben. Honestly, if you're watching this, Ben, you should start your own YouTube channel because you, you're really good at this tweaking setup stuff. And I can only thank him uh, for his sort of suggestions. And I've used his ideas as well as my own to produce this sort of latest version, I'd say, of that, you know, holy grail of settings for this sim. Now, we're in Tokyo right now as part of my world tour. And this is a 3D photogrammic area and it is absolutely, it kills your computer. I mean, even in 2D mode, you know, it'd be struggling. So the fact that I am doing this, I feel like I'm defying the laws of computer science in a, you know, that I'm able to do this. So how am I doing this? That's the question. Well, I'm not going to mess around, guys. This is my sort of quick guide on getting your Quest 2 set up in the worst case scenario, okay? So you can use it in the most graphically intensive areas with really high settings. My uh, computer is an i5-8600K running at five gigahertz, that's crucial, and a 1080 Ti card, which is walking wounded at the moment. It's actually, uh, you know, it's working hard, and one of the fans is a bit dodgy, but it's actually working at the moment, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be still, it will be behaving itself for at least another six months, because I'm not gonna be upgrading my graphics card just to let you know. Anyway, so first of all, let's go to your NVIDIA settings. I am currently using the latest driver, actually, uh, because I'm finding that the latest driver is working much better in VR. Although, you know, feel free to experiment because it's a bit like a motorcyclist with oil changes, you know, what's the best oil? You know, it's like that for drivers, <laughs> honestly. But I think the, the latest driver is working fairly well. There's a few uh, settings that actually are quite useful. So here we are, that is my settings I'm using at the moment. Notice I'm using the uh, vertical sync at fast, uh, setting that there, that works really well. Pre-rendered frames at two, and my texture quality is set at best performance and the power management is at maximum performance okay so try those settings guys let me know and by the way if you haven't already please make sure you join the vr aviator facebook group honestly those guys are superb it's just adult chat you know it's no childish comments or anything like that it's just uh, you know everyone who's passionate about vr and flight simulation all in one place just wanted to help each other out and it's fantastic so thank you to bam uh, for and Drew actually both of those guys uh, and I'll link their channels in the description below they started this channel many uh, years ago and it's fantastic look at that oh my god am I even doing this in VR <laughs> anyway back to the settings we need to go to the oculus software now make sure that you are signed up to the beta test channel at the time it's recording you still need to do that so that is the settings tab beta I'll put that on the screen, there we go. So once you've done that, then click device, go to your Quest 2 once it's actually on link, okay? That's important. And then uh, go to the bottom and you'll see your resolution and refresh rate settings. I've currently got it set to 72 hertz. Personally, I prefer it at 80 hertz. That is my preference, but I must admit in areas like this, you know, even that is a struggle. So if you set your Quest 2 to 72 hertz, it's a little bit flashy, I've got to admit. Nowhere near as bad as the Reva G2 in 60 hertz mode, but it does enable you to uh, get away with lower uh, frame rate. So once you've done that, set your resolution scale to 1.3. Now, I will say that if you're in a different area where you don't, you know, like this is mad. This is absolutely madness that I'm using. Uh, I'd be able to fly in VR in this area right now with these settings. It's crazy. But if you're not in an area like this and you've got a bit more headroom for frame rate, I'd recommend setting that to 80 hertz and your resolution at 1.6 because you'll get a nice image inside uh, the, you know, the sim. So try those settings, both of those, and see how you get on. So, are you still with me, guys? Hopefully. Hopefully you're enjoying these uh, images here. I'm using the mirror, guys, so if it's a little bit juddery and jerky, I do apologise. It's not like that in the sim itself, as I always say. So, with the Oculus Tray tool, make sure you update it within the app itself, okay? That's important. I'll put a link in the description below of where you can find the Tray tool, but once you download it, you might need to update it. That, you, you can do that within the app itself, that's very important as well. 
Now, set your super sampling, if you're in 72 hertz mode, okay, to 1.6. If you've set it to 80 hertz mode and 1.6 in your Oculus software, then set that to 1.0, okay? That's important, otherwise you'll kill performance. So, once you've done that, you've got the asynchronous time warp. Now, that's a really contentious issue, and honestly, this is all to do with personal preference. I'm gonna, this is my opinion, right, guys? The whole point of me using the Oculus headset in a flight sim is because the motion projection allows you to have smooth motion on the ground uh, rid to, down to crazy low frame rate. You can't do that in the Revo G2. That's why I like to use it, but you do get artifacts. Sometimes you'll get the prop, uh, which will look a bit warpy, uh, and you'll get sort of, you know, a bit of a wavy image if the frame rate can't handle whatever you've set. That's fair enough. I know a lot of you guys don't like that. So, I mean, I actually use it at a locked 18 hertz mode, okay? I find that really smooth. And sometimes I'll use uh, the 30 frame rate uh, mode as well. So, say in the 80 hertz, that will be 27 frames per second. And it'll be even lower at 72 hertz mode. But, okay, if you don't like motion projection, just disable it. But th my argument here, right, is that if you're gonna disable motion projection and you don't mind it being off, Guys, seriously, if you're using flight simulation in VR, use, get the Reverb G2. I actually flew around this same area in the Reverb G2, and this is a shocker, okay? At full native resolution, looked far better than the Quest 2, and I was getting really, really good performance. I was getting about 25 to 30 frames per second, and it felt great. I actually prefer the G2 over any other headset for flight simulation. I've always said this, guys, but I know some of you you know, I'm not sure of my opinion on that one. The Reverb G2 is the ultimate headset, honestly. But if you have got a Quest 2 and you can't really afford the Reverb G2, or you prefer the Quest 2 because you can use it standalone, at the end of the day, the Quest 2 is a more, the, the headset is, you know, it's far more of an all-rounder than the G2. You know, if you prefer that, then don't worry about what I've said and we'll continue with our setup. So if you want motion projection on or off, that's something that is a personal preference. I prefer it on because that's the whole point of having an Oculus headset in this sim. But having said that, try it off as well. That's all I can say really guys to that. There's no definitive for this. This is why there's lots of people in the comments with different views on this. Okay, let's continue with the setup before this video becomes a whole day. <laughs> so once we've done that, you've got your uh, field of view multiplier. You can try this as well. You can set that to 0.7 or 0.8. That will put, it, put in the field of view a little bit, but you'll get great performance increase, up to 30%. If you don't like that, leave it alone, guys, because I know a lot of you also like a really good field of view. And the Quest 2 gives you a better field of view than the Reverb G2, without a doubt. It really does, which is a, a shocker that I said in my last video. But if you want that little bit extra performance, you don't mind that little, you know, the field of view going in slightly, you don't notice it that much, particularly the, uh, the horizontal field of view, set that to 0.7 or 0.8, you will definitely notice a difference in performance. Okay, next part of this is the Quest Link setup. These are my settings, I'll put them on now. I think the crucial thing here that I've changed is the bit rate. I've now set that to 500, and I, I, I don't know why, but the first time I did that, uh, my computer wouldn't, didn't like it, whether it's because of an update or, or you know, from Oculus itself. But I find a bit rate of 500 is really nice, and the screen in this thing is amazing, especially at 90 hertz, okay? Because I've tried the Quest 2 in Medal of Honor now, and Stormland, and Asgard's Wrath, and actually, it's almost indistinguishable between the uh, the Rift S now, and of course you you get a better resolution and no screen door, so it really is very impressive actually. Uh, so I'd recommend that bit rate of 500. The next part is the in sim settings. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, guys, because I think already I've probably fried your brain. There are my settings, and as you can see. There's a few changes that I've, I've uh, you know, made for the Quest 2, and again, that's thanks to Ben. He's using a render scale of 80. Try that, but I must admit, the, the visual clarity does suffer when you're in 72 hertz mode. I don't like it personally, so I've set that to 100. And, uh, cause I do find the render scale in the sim far more aggressive than any other slider outside of the sim. That goes for the Reverb G2 as well. 
I think the main differences I've changed is the bloom. I've taken that off. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. But they, they're my settings. So pause the video and let me know how you get on, guys. That is my quest to quick sort of setup guide. As I say, I'm not a fan of uh, using 72 hertz mode, but I must admit, it just shows you that the Quest 2 is incredibly versatile. And in, you know, when you're doing your world tour and you get to an area like this, which is just, oh my God, amazing. Like this is just crazy graphics right now. And there's no way I can perform uh, this at 90 hertz in the Quest 2. I back that off to 72 hertz with those settings I'm looking at the window mainly anyway, it's actually really nice. So I'm going to finish this video with some drone footage in 2D mode that I took with some nice music so you can just relax to. And if you need to pause the video at any time, go for it. I'll do my best to remain, um, sort of, you know, answer all the comments, but I do struggle to answer all of them. If I don't answer, please don't think I'm ignoring you, honestly. I, I hate it that I can't answer everybody, but uh, please let me know anyway. I do read all of them, and uh, yeah, good luck, guys. But I have to say, to finish this video, the very best experience remains to be inside the Reverb G2, without a doubt. But I have to say, for £300, the Quest 2 is insane. You can use it standalone. You can get away with so many different settings. You've got more options for settings uh, in the Quest 2, particularly with the refresh rate. It works far better. And uh, you know, if you don't mind that motion projection, it is absolutely brilliant. The Oculus software is the best in the business. Take care, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.